So I've been on a storage solutions kick here lately, and I was thinking, what is one of the most unsightly things around your house? Well, it's your water hose. Most people have nice landscaping around their house, and then a piled up garden hose or a cheap plastic hose reel. So let's fix that. So for today's video, I'll be building a garden planter with a hidden hose compartment. So for the frame of this build, I'll be using one and a half by one and a half material, and I'm gonna cut my own. All of those parts will be less than 24 inches, so to make things a little easier, I've cut a couple of boards down to 24 inches and I'll rip these down to an inch and a half. By cutting the material down to shorter lengths, if your board has any type of a bow to it, this is going to help to take a lot of that out. So I'm gonna start off by ripping these down to six boards that are an inch and a half by an inch and a half, and I'll give you the exact dimensions just here in a bit. And as always, I'll be teaching you step by step and giving you every dimension to every part of this build. But if you're a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my website and you can pick up a set there. So the first thing that I've done is cut off the rounded edge of my material. That way I can use it as a guide against my fence. Plus it gives it a lot cleaner of a look. And the reason why I did not cut these to the exact length before I started ripping this is because each one of these parts will have an angle on each end. Oftentimes you can save yourself a lot of headache just by leaving a little extra material on the ends just in case you have to recut an angle. So to start with, I'm just turning everything into square stock. All right, so now that we have our six parts cut at one and a half by one and a half, let's move on to our fence pickets. So the fence pickets will be used to make the side walls of the planter. So the planter is gonna have four different sides and two of the sides will be cut square. So because the front and back will be at an angle, the width of the pickets on the front versus the side walls are gonna be just a little bit different. So I'm gonna start by cutting down my material for my side walls and then we'll go to the front and back. So I'm gonna set a few of these to the side start making our side walls. So to start with for this material, I'm gonna clean up the outside edges. I want this planter to be nice, clean, and sharp looking. And to clean up this side, I'm just gonna be taking off about a 16th of an inch. So now that I have one edge cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size. So if you notice in the beginning that this planter actually sits at an angle, that is a 10 degree angle. And there will be several parts that will be cut at 10 degrees. But the good thing about this project is that's the only angle that we're gonna be cutting at. So no big deal. So for the sideboards, I'm gonna set my saw at a 10 degree angle. Then I'll set my fence at five and three eighths of an inch away from my inside tooth. I'm gonna put the flat edge of the board against my fence and make these cuts. Since my sidewall boards are now ripped to size, and I do not want to get these mixed up with my front and back boards, let's go ahead and head over to the miter saw and break these down. So for these sidewall parts, we will be needing eight pieces that are 14 inches long. Okay, so now that we have our sidewalls cut to length, there's only one thing left to do, and then we'll be finished with these side parts. So you may be wondering why we're bringing two parts back to the table saw. These two parts will be the bottoms of the outside edges. So they're actually going to need the 10 degree angle put on both sides. Since we have it on one side already, we want to put the long part of that angle down. So the long part of the angle is touching the fence, leaving a gap at the top. And then we'll move our fence in 1 16th of an inch and make our cut. And then we can start working on our front and back walls. And before you start cutting, make sure to set your saw back to 90 degrees or zero. And then again, I'm gonna start by ripping off my outside edges, set my saw depth to five and a quarter and rip my material. These boards will not be needing the 10 degree angle. And you'll see why here in a minute. So now that our material is cut down to five and a half inches, Let's go ahead and put our angles on it. And as I mentioned before, all of our angles are gonna be at 10 degrees. So I'll start by setting my saw at 10 degrees off of the center. And then with my two boards stacked on top of each other, I'm gonna make my first end cut. I'll flip my board over, measure 24 inches from tip to tip, and then make that cut. And then I'll flip the board again, measure down 22 and 3 sixteenths from tip to tip, and make that cut. And then I'll repeat this step for 20 and 3 eighths. And then my last two parts that will be 18 and 5 eighths from tip to tip, I'll have to get those from my third board. So whenever I'm trying to match up the angles for different length boards so that it's one solid angle that flows, I like to leave a little bit of extra material on one end. That way I can cut these angles to match exactly. People's tape measures or their miter saws may be off by a 64th. So with that bit of extra material, you can just trim it down until it fits perfectly. It's totally up to you, but the measurements that I gave you earlier, I would just add maybe an eighth of an inch to each one of those and then just trim these down once you have them all cut. So now that we have all of our parts cut for the side walls, let's turn this one and a half by one and a half material into four legs and two support boards. So if you remember at the beginning whenever I was cutting this material, I said that I'd left it a little long to account for my angles. So to add the angles on each end of the legs with our saw still set at 10 degrees, I'll make my first 10 degree cut on the very end. And then from the tip of that cut, I'm gonna measure down to 21 and a half inches. I'll make that mark. Then I'll turn my board back to the way that it was against the fence and copy that measurement on this side. So now your board should look something like this. 
So I'm going to place it back against the fence the way that it was, slide it down, and then whenever I make this cut, I want my blade to intersect the line on the outside edge. Let me show you what I mean. So your leg is going to look something like this. The tip of one side will be up, and the tip of the opposite side will be down. So yeah, it'd be a lot easier if I just said 21 and a half from tip to tip, but that would bring your measurement, you know, out here. So I just wanted to show you how you can measure around to get a perfect tip to tip measurement whenever your angles are going the same direction. Or if you had a saw with a stop block, just set it for 21 and a half. It'll make things a lot easier. But if you don't, after you cut your first one, just use this as a template for the rest. So now we have all of our parts cut to get started putting this thing together. We have our front and back angled parts. I've just separated them into two different groups here. We have our 14 inch sidewalls and those two sidewall boards that we put an angle on both sides. Let's go ahead and break this down into a kit here. So just make sure that you have one of the double angle boards in each one of your little kits. We have a couple of the original boards left that we have not cut yet. We'll custom fit those to size in a later step. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to assemble our sidewalls. So for this, we'll be needing two of our legs and one of our sidewall bundles here. They're actually gonna be the walls that sit like this the two outside edges. So since we know at this angle, the outsides of these boards will be showing, those are the sides of the boards that we need to attach our 14 inch material to. So to keep things easy, let's just fold these in like this. So you're seeing this little triangle gap here. Anything on this side will actually be the top. So this is the top of our planner and these sides will be the bottoms. So do not forget that you have two boards that have an angle on each side. Let's go ahead and set those to the side because they're gonna go on last. They're gonna go on these ends. We're gonna start from the center and work our way out. So I'm gonna start by applying wood glue to the legs. And then starting at the center, I'm gonna make sure that the angle of my board matches the angle of my leg. I'm gonna place it at the very top here. We'll make sure it's flush on the outside as well as the top. Perfect 10 degree angle here. Just to hold these parts into place while I work, I'm gonna throw a brad nail into the center of each board. And then we'll line up the top inside of our second leg. Once that's in place, you'll continue to work your way down the board following the angle of the first board. The tops of the board should sit flush and you should have a small angle gap on the sides. And then for the bottom board, since it has an angle on each side, it will match up to your top board and it will also follow the angle of the leg. Now let's add some wood screws. And for the spacing, I'm measuring three quarters of an inch from the end and one inch from the edge of each board. And if you're curious about the tool that I'm using, this is just to make a starter for my screw so it doesn't walk. Really anything with a sharp point, even a nail would work for this. And then I'll pre-drill and install my screws. Oh look, a toy. Free bit. It's kind of like uh, when you were a kid and you know, you get like a toy inside of a cereal box. I know a lot of you guys out there probably don't remember that, but if you do, let me know what your favorite cereal was. As for the screws, I'm using one and a quarter inch deck screws, and I'll be placing two screws in the ends of each board. And it really wasn't my favorite, and I don't know if they make it anymore, but it always seemed like we had life cereal at home. You know, the Mikey kid that would eat anything? Pretty sure that was life. I know there was a Mikey that would eat anything. Wish Mikey would put these screws in for me. Knock this next one out. Then we're gonna get to the fun part, putting on our angled slats. All right, so we have our two side panels done. Kind of look like mini cornhole boards. Pretty good idea there, really good idea there. But anyway, back on the track here. Let's get these set up the way that they are going to be. So like this. This is the outside of the planter. Then we'll have our angled slats going across. So I'm just gonna turn this on its side and install this first wall from the top. So we're gonna install our angle board the same way that we did for our side walls. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. For this first wall, we'll go all the way to the bottom. For the front and back, my screw placement will be one inch from the top and the bottom of each board and an inch and a quarter in. Okay, so this is where we are at coming together nicely and one side still open. So before I put this last side on in our little hidden door, we actually need to make a divider for this thing. The reason why I haven't given you the exact dimension for the last two parts yet, because whatever length that you decide to put in here will actually decide the sizes of your two different boxes. So if you want a larger storage compartment, you would make this cross brace longer. Or if you wanted a deeper area for your flowers, you would just make this crossbar a bit longer. It would bring it up. For mine, I'm gonna install mine at 16 and three quarters of an inch long. That's from tip to tip. This is the exact same stock that we made for our legs. And I think that that will give me plenty of room for what I want to do with this. 
up top. Let's get a couple of those cut and installed. Now there's several different ways that you can install these, but for mine, I'm gonna use wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws. So with my first brace installed, I'm gonna go ahead and install my top two angled boards. Oh. Echo, echo. So now with my top two boards installed, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my last brace. Okay, so we are almost finished. We need to make our little door at the bottom and we need to put some cross slats in on top of our braces. You can actually use some of your cedar fence picket material, but I'm gonna take some of my scrap two by material and put three quarter inch slats across. And what you decide to use as your supports will be determined by what you're planning on growing in this. The slats that I'm using are three quarter by an inch and a half by 14 inches long. And I'll be using five. So now that we have our bottom supports in, let's go ahead and build our little trap door. So there's a couple of different ways, just like everything else, that you can build this little trap door. The problem with all of these different angles is it won't allow you to hinge it unless you hinge it up. And you would still have to cut an angle on the bottom. So I've decided to use magnets. And these are just like the cheap little magnets that you can pick up at Walmart or wherever. But they're going to be perfect for this job. So the first thing that I'm going to do for this removable door is going to be to attach it from the inside. For this, I'm going to be using two pieces of six inch scrap that's three quarters of an inch thick. And I'll be using wood glue and one inch screws to hold everything into place. I'm also going to throw in a few brad nails until this wood glue dries. Now to install my magnets. And for the placement of the magnets, I'm going to measure up each leg two inches and eight inches. And then from the outside edge, I'm going to measure in an inch and a quarter. Where these two marks intersect will be the center of my three quarter of an inch hole. And then on the inside of my trap door, on each edge, I'm gonna measure up two inches and eight inches, and again, an inch and a quarter from each side. Now, all of my marks, I'll be drilling a three quarter of an inch round inset that is the thickness of my magnet. And to install my magnets, I'm gonna be using CA glue. Since magnets will only connect each other one way, that's super cool. Anytime I'm installing them, I like to connect two of them. That way that I know that I'm not installing one backwards. This is some good stuff. And that's my flash. Never fails. I'm actually two magnets short, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Make sure to get another pack of those things ordered. They're dirt cheap and super handy to have around. But even missing this bottom magnet, I bet it'll still hold up just fine. Let's give her a try. Actually holds in pretty good. Do not need an extra magnet. I'll be putting stain on mine and I may do some other modifications, like drilling out a hole in the side or the back so the water hose that's going to be stored in here could actually stay hooked up to the spigot. But, super cool planter with super cool trap door. 